How's it going everyone? It's Sam. I want to talk about whether your investments are too risky. Because for some people, I think their investments are too risky for their own personal preference. Now, I realize this video will be very beneficial to some people. Other people, it will just be reaffirming what they already know and just helping them, I think, wrap their head around what is their actual risk tolerance. Now, I've done videos like in this in the past that a lot of people were pissed off at me for. Uh, when there's a risk on environment where everyone's making money in penny stocks, no one wants to talk about keeping money on the sidelines. And in the past, I've talked about how there would be a crash that came up, whether it was in growth stocks or indexes or cryptos or whatever. And almost to a T, all those have happened except the indexes, right? Cryptos and growth stocks both crashed, legitimately crashed uh, from their highs. And I think a lot of people that listen to the advice that, hey, you should have some cash on the sidelines did quite well. But today I'm going to give you actual questions that should help you answer whether your risk is too high in your investments or whether you have it nailed down and actually you are taking the right amount of risks. Now, of course, with risk, there comes reward. When there's no risk, then there's almost no reward. When there is high risk, there is usually higher reward, but also, again, you can fall down. I mean, that's obvious to a lot of people, but I think a lot of people don't understand what they're actually comfortable with until it's too late. I know a lot of people get greedy. They see other people making a lot of money, and I see this all the time, especially being on YouTube. I get lashed out at a lot when the market's down, and I get praised when it's up, and I have no control over that. All I'm trying to do is set up myself and set up, you know, Anyone that wants to listen to what I'm doing in the best way possible moving forward. So again, we're going to talk about what you can actually do to make sure that you maximize your profits while also making yourself comfortable moving forward. Because something like this, right? I have this here, Time Technologies. It's a penny stock that I've been investing in for a while. It's up 10% after market hours today because of an exciting announcement. Some people feel like they might have missed out. But the thing is, everyone is always excited when it's going up, but are you able to stomach the volatility? It went up to $3.50. Then it's come down all the way down to under a dollar or right around a dollar. Then it's come back up significantly. Are you able to handle that? Again, we'll get into some of the questions here in a second to kind of get your head around whether you can actually handle volatility or not. But before we do, if you guys don't mind hitting the like button, I appreciate that. Please hit subscribe if you haven't done that already. If you guys want to trade, and buy stocks. I really like Weeble. There is a link down below. Just deposit $100 and get some free stocks. You can trade before the market opens and after it closes. So if you're like, oh man, time's going up a lot right now. I'm going to sell it. You could sell it. Uh, so in case you guys want that, that is linked down below. Now let's just cover some different levels of risk. First of all, you could just be in cash, right? You could just have cash investments. That doesn't really do anything for you. We don't get large amounts of interest in our bank accounts anymore. From there, you could be investing in index funds. It's a great way to not really have to think about your money, just throw in an index fund. You might underperform, you might outperform. Uh, you don't really have too much control over the investments. You usually just throw in some money and then you don't have to worry about investing. Realty income, you could invest in dividend stocks like realty income. Overall, continues to go up. Generally, uh, they pay some dividends. They did have a nice fall last year during the pandemic, but overall, pretty, I'd say pretty consistent with dividends. Uh, dividend companies are pretty consistent, not great returns a lot of the time, but uh, you know, they are steady. Then you could go bid, big tech if you want to invest in individual companies like Apple or Amazon, stuff like that, a little bit lower risk, but still perform really well typically. Palantir, you could go with something like a $10 billion to $100 billion company, a little bit smaller, usually a higher risk, higher reward. You could go with something like Lordstown, just a couple billion dollars. This one fell down a lot with some bad news recently. Are you able to stomach that? Are you able to not panic sell? That's a question. Sensionix, uh, this is a penny stock. You go even smaller than that. This is a $1.5 billion penny stock. Uh, it's actually done quite well the last week or so. It's up about 35%, but again, can you handle it? Then you could go into crypto, something like Bitcoin, or you could go something smaller like Cardano, or even something smaller than that like Shiba Inu. So you can get hundreds, 100x returns, but you could also fall down 99%. So what 
will actually determine what kind of risk tolerance you have. Well, I think there are a couple things you have to actually look at and understand moving into this. So what's your timeline? Are you invested for the long term? Are you gonna uh, just try to flip and get some quick money? Uh, I never suggest investing money that you need anytime soon. Like if you are buying a house, I do not suggest putting your money into you know, some growth stock or anything like that. I think that that's a bad idea. Of course, not financial advice, but that is my thinking. Uh, also, how close are you to retirement? Like if you are 60 years old and you wanna retire at 62, probably not the best time to go put 10% of your portfolio in some high risk, high reward asset. Now, of course, on the other hand, if you're really young, you wanna make sure that you're not throwing all your cash at some crap that uh, is very high risk and probably high reward, but also very risky because if you're making good money when you're young and you put it to work in something that isn't like just some meme or something like that or some joke, you can actually build that up consistently and it can be very significant. Like $10,000 when you're 22 is a lot of money compared to you know $10,000 when you're 50. So if you wanna invest in maybe some I would say investing in better companies early on instead of something that is like very risky might make a little bit of sense too. And I realize that those almost seem like oxymorons, but you know, at the end or at the beginning, it is pretty important uh, that you invest wisely. Of course, all the time in between too. But then are you well diversified? Like for me, I very rarely get nervous on any investment because I'm almost overly diversified. Now, I would say my crypto investments are pretty heavily weighted like Bitcoin and Ethereum. I have a significant portion of my money in, but I know that overall I'm still comfortable. They're still under 10% of my investment portfolio. Uh, Each of them separately are still under 10%. So overall, I'm happy with that. Also, the place that I store them gives me an interest too. So BlockFi, there's a link down below if you're interested in that. They pay up to $250 worth of bonus when you sign up and deposit a certain amount. Uh, They pay an interest rate. So that makes me feel even better, right? I'm not worried if it go down, I just wanna buy more. Then what's your income look like? If you make 100 grand a year, let's say, versus 50 grand a year, your investing might be a little bit different. You might be able to take a little bit more risk or maybe you want to take less risk because you have more money and you should be retiring earlier if you are able to put a lot of that to work and even if it's a little bit safer so there's that question then i guess i should put one more in if there's a drop if there's a drop of 50 percent, are you likely to buy more or to want to sell i know for me it depends on the investment with some penny stocks, I didn't wanna buy more when they fell pretty dramatically because I didn't know whether this was gonna hurt them really long-term and I didn't know if there was gonna be a lot of excitement for them later. Now, part of that is because they also have to raise money. A lot of these burn through a lot of money and if they're at depressed prices for too long, it's harder for them to raise more money. But in something like crypto, I am excited to buy more. I realize that there's huge adoption for them for different cryptos. And I don't think there's ever gonna be something that replaces what Bitcoin is trying to do. Now, I'm not saying that you know Bitcoin will always be the number one crypto, but I think people are generally going to stay with crypto for its use case. So I'm excited to buy more when it drops. I could say the same thing for Tattooed Chef or uh, for Apple. If they drop, I'm gonna buy more. So that is kind of my thinking. Of course, just know what kind of investor you are. And then do you have cash sitting on the sidelines? If you don't have cash sitting on the sidelines, you're probably gonna wanna panic a little bit more. If there's cash on the sidelines, it changes your thinking so much. Even if you're losing money all the time, you feel like you have control over the situation. You can buy more. You can buy the dip. There's something to be said for that. Now, I hold anywhere between, I'd say 10 and 30% cash all the time. If there are big dips, like when we saw growth fall down a lot, my cash went down a lot because I was buying a lot. Uh, Same thing with crypto. If cryptos fall down, I'm buying that dip. Now, I'm coming with a video here soon on how I'm going to invest, how I'm going to keep money on the sidelines, but also put it to work for me. One way of doing that is actually with BlockFi. You can get 10% on your stablecoin right now. So it doesn't fluctuate in price. You put money in there. It gets 10% APY. It pays every single month and compounds on itself. 
So that is one way to actually keep your cash working for you. Of course, there are always risks and rewards with that. So definitely always do your own due diligence. But that is my thinking. So what's your timeline? Are you well diversified enough? What's your income look like? Are you able to stomach a drop? And then do you have cash sitting on the sidelines? I think all those things determine your risk tolerance. And of course, there are some people that are just inherently more risky than others. I know some people that take an amount of risk that I'm not comfortable with, but it changes over time. Just like your appetite changes, your appetite for risk changes. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you think you should be looking at when you are determining your risk tolerance? What do you think helps mitigate you know, panic selling? Let me know down in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for hitting the like button and checking out those links down below, and I will see you in the next video.